Hi everybody, I'm here today to talk about the Ant-Man Giant Man Epic Collections. Ant-Man Epic Collection Volume 2 is coming out January 24 and this is significant because Volume 1 came out 8 years ago. It was one of the earliest epic collections. There was a volume one and we knew there was going to be a volume two because Ant-Man's early adventures in Tales to Astonish were not completely collected in this one book. They left out about 10 stories. So we knew at some point there was going to be a volume two. And now, thanks to Ant-Man the Wasp Quantumania, everyone is excited about that movie and Marvel has decided to finally give us volume two. Because Volume 1 came out 8 years ago, it is out of print, but rest assured Marvel is reprinting this one February 1st, and so you will be able to get a copy of both volumes of Ant-Man Giant Man Epic Collection just in time for this movie, and you can enjoy all of the early appearances of Hank Pym and Scott Lang. Here are the Ant-Man and Giant Man Epic Collections Volume 1 and Volume 2. Uh, they collect all of the early appearances of these characters here. The very first Tales to Astonish story in Ant-Man features Hank Pym just as a scientist who's created a shrinking serum. It doesn't even have to do with anything with superheroes, but Tales to Astonish was an anthology horror series at the time, and this was just one of the random horror stories. And it wasn't until a few issues later when they decided that, you know, this guy's kind of popular. Let's give him a costume and give him the Marvel makeover and turn him into a superhero that we actually get to see the, uh, the Ant-Man that we're used to. These, all of these early issues are um, Jack Kirby. Uh, here are some of the uh, Ant-Man bad guys like Egghead. Yep, the Scarlet Beetle is another one. Not a very impressive rogues gallery at all. Later on in the series, Don Heck takes up the artwork chores and uh, does a really good job. And this is where we see Wasp come into the picture here. And the two of them become a partnership both professionally and romantically. These are all short stories. They range from, you know, 8 to 10 to 12 pages, depending on the issue. Very few of them are uh, to be continued, except for this story here with the human top. And there's Jack Kirby again. They are a lot of fun. You have to really enjoy the Silver Age comics to enjoy these stories quite a bit uh, because the, there's a lot of writing, the storytelling has a very different pacing than modern comics, but if you like Silver Age stuff, you will like this as well. Volume 2 of Ant-Man is much more of a grab bag. There's so much more uh, in here that we're going to talk about. Uh, first of all, we finish off the Tales to Astonish storyline, the, the last few issues before Namor takes over the title and replaces Ant-Man as the, uh, I think this is the superhero. In this one, Giant Man gets a new costume, and I can't say that it's my favorite costume of his, but there it is for you. After the series ends, Ant-Man kind of just pals around with the uh, Avengers a lot, and we don't get those issues collected in here, but we do get a backup story from Iron Man. Then Ant-Man gets his own starring vehicle in the pages of Marvel Feature, where he is brought back with a bunch of his returning villains like Egghead. Some of these stories are written by Mark Friedrich, and you can see some Herb Trimpey artwork here. Look at that great costume, very Flash Gordon. Herb Trimpey was doing work on Incredible Hulk at the time, so he doesn't do every issue of Marvel Feature here. He trades off with Dan Adkins and Craig Russell. In the pages of Power Man, we meet a new giant character named Goliath. This is Bill Foster. And this character got um, a little bit of a starring role in Power Man and before leaping into his own miniseries. And all of that is collected in this book, the, all five issues of the miniseries. And wrapping up the Black Goliath arc is the story from the Champions, which kind of ties up a few loose ends and brings some closure to the character for the time being. And at the very end, we have a couple of issues of Marvel Premiere, and this is the origin of Scott Lang as Ant-Man, with a story from David Michelinie and artwork by John Byrne and Bob Layton. We only get a little tease of this character, and then the epic collection ends, and so maybe we can get some more Scott Lang appearances. So where does this leave the epic collections? Will there be an Ant-Man Volume 3? Well, the Marvel Masterworks ended with uh, three volumes total, which collect the entire contents of these two books. There's an old trade from 2015 called Ant-Man Scott Lang. And that trade has the Marvel premiere issues that we see at the end of this volume, but it also has 11 more issues that could easily become the first half of a volume three. Then you can throw in a Marvel Comics present stories and some annual crossovers. There's a four issue limited series starring Giant Man and something called Marvel Double Feature. I think there's plenty of content for Volume 3. 
My guess would probably be that we'll see maybe a, an Ant-Man and the Wasp modern era collection because there are lots of different series and mini series featuring Hank Pym and Scott Lang. Um, and you know, we could see a good collection of more modern material come through the Epic line like that. But anyway, that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoy these Ant-Man collections. I think they're a lot of fun uh, and I'll see you in my next video. Oh, 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 oh,